I'm back. Road Rants for Black and White Sports Week 4. The XFL Week 3 just got done. I wanted to get these power rankings out. Make sure you pound that subscribe button. We cover the XFL on here as best we can, okay? Last week was the first jump into the power rankings. I do it every week for the NFL. It is our most popular reoccurring video every week. We also do a live NFL prediction show uh, every week, okay? Me, myself and John Matrix, head-to-head -head all year long, okay? All the way through to the Super Bowl. Now, week four power rankings. Things look very interesting. Some things I said last week kind of showed out a little bit today. One thing that none of us saw coming uh, to a point, we didn't see it coming. But I'll bring up a couple of things and point a couple of things out. Now, people are going to be shocked I am going here. Number eight, the New York Guardians. That's right. They've got a win. There are winless teams in the league right now. And, frankly, I picked them because they look completely disinterested in playing competitive football. Uh, I don't know what's happened with the Guardians, um, but Matt McGloin, of course, had the sideline meltdown last week. He played a little better this week, but look, he had 84 passing yards this week, and... It was a 29-9 to beatdown from the Battle Hawks. And really and truly, yeah, they rushed the ball okay. But I said going into last week's video, I don't know how much I trust Kevin, uh, Kevin Gilbride, ex-offensive coordinator for the Giants. And it seems like he is losing his team and like their spirit has been broken. Okay, and if I think your spirit has been broken and your will to want to perform out there like a professional, I'm going to I'm going to nail you in my rankings without a doubt, especially in a new league like this. All right, it's it's is it odd for me to put a a, a, a team that's got to win when there's winless teams at the bottom? Yeah, it is out of the ordinary, but when I watch this team, they look completely disengaged. With the football game, uh, I don't think their offensive coaching staff and their offensive players are on the same page. Their offensive coordinator looks way in over his head, and that concerns me greatly going forward. I said last week, I this would be Marquise Williams' show right now, um, and I would give him a shot, but I can tell you right now, I would start Luis Perez next week for the Guardians without a doubt because he was one of the better quarterbacks in the AEF. He's on the roster. He played today. He was four for five for 80 yards. Play the man. Okay? And move the ball. Number seven, Tampa Bay Vipers. Look, I said in my predictions I thought they would play uh, – I thought they would play tough this week, being a home opener. I really did. Uh, and they gave the Roughnecks all they could handle. Um, they run the ball fairly well. I don't know. I still don't trust Mark Tressman. I don't understand why he doesn't want to pull the trigger on Quentin Flowers at starting quarterback. Flowers is a dual threat. He was four for six, 51 passing yards. 29 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. Uh, Cornelius, look, anytime you've got a 50-something percent completion percentage, I'm going to consider putting you on the bench, okay? That's just that's just kind of how I look at it. Uh, it would be different if you were a full blazer out there and you're running all over the place. And, yeah, Cornelius has got a little wheels, sort of, but com compared to Flowers, who can... Flowers is a playmaker, okay? 
Their defense is not playing real great either. But look, they are. Tressman at least had the Vipers engaged in the game, which is more than I can say for the New York Guardians. So, Vipers at seven. Okay. Uh, number six. And this pains me to say, uh, considering Seattle Dragons. Okay. I actually picked the Dragons to upset the Renegades this week, and I ate. And the Dragons stuck one right, bam, in my eye hole. Uh, my preseason pick for MVP, Brandon Silvers, he did play better this week. 204 yards passing, two touchdowns. Uh, but they just could not, they couldn't hold on defense. They couldn't seem to take take advantage of that large crowd up there, over 20,000 again, engaged fans. And we saw Bob Stoops, professional quarterback, Landry Jones, uh, Cameron Artis Payne, some of them guys take advantage of the Dragons. I've got the Dragons at number six. Do I think the Dragons are capable of winning a few more games? Sure, particularly at home. But their offense has got to get better. It does. Ha- it absolutely has to get better. Number five. The L.A. Wildcats. That's right. The Wildcats just put the mother of all beatdowns on the D.C. Defenders. I picked the Defenders, but I said the, the Wildcats would make it interesting. Well, they said to hell with you and you making it interesting. They went out and whipped the hell out of the D.C. Defenders. Cardell Jones looked like he had no idea what he was doing out there. The Wildcats defense was nuts. They intercepted Cardell Jones four times. Okay. Uh, look, the one reason I, I I almost had the Wildcats above the Guardians last week. And I said, I came very close. The, the Wildcats were at seven. I said I almost put them at six because they played the Renegades the week before real tough, and it was Josh Johnson's first game. I said once Johnson gets to playing in this league and gets his feet under, you've got two major professional NFL quarterbacks playing, Landry Jones and Josh Johnson. And Landry Jones went out there, or, or Josh Johnson went out there and showed out. He showed out in this game. He showed. I've started a lot of NFL games. And he, he, Trey McBride, Nelson Spruce, they wore out that D.C. secondary. Uh, Cardell Jones was MIA, okay? And one of my concerns I've got with the D.C. defenders right now after watching this game is it was pretty obvious Pep Hamilton lost confidence in Cardell Jones. He did. He was running the ball late in the third quarter. I mean, real late in the third. When it was obvious they should be back in the shotgun throwing the ball around. And he did not want to let Cardell sling the ball. He did not. Okay. So, that's where I've got the LA Wildcats number five. They're at one and two. And they're going to be a team because of Josh Johnson. To watch going forward. Number four. The DC Defenders. You may be like, whoa. Yeah, my last week's number one. I knocked all the way to four. And it's because of what we just talked about. Cardell Jones looked terrible. Their defense looked terrible. Uh, Pep Hamilton looked terrible unsure of what to do with Cardell and all of a sudden that all becomes wildly concerning to me okay look are the DC defenders out of it no at home I expect DC to wreck shop but they can't go on the road and look pathetic either okay they can't they won't make it to the title game so 
I, I, ha- I, I am. I'm hammering them for that. I am hammering the, the DC Defenders for putting on the performance they put on this week. Number three, the Dallas Renegades. And look, they didn't look very good the first week. The second week, Landry Jones came back. Now, one thing that concerns me about Landry is he still, just like he did in the NFL, he still throws the ball to the other team way too much. It's amazing. I'm like, okay, it's not an NFL thing. It's a Landry Jones thing. But Landry completed 73% of his passes, slung it for 274 yards, had three touchdowns, and Landry looks like an NFL quarterback. He's out there pointing out defenses. He's reading defenses. And Bob Stoops, an all-time great, okay, at at uh, at Oklahoma, is the coach of this team. Uh, they they got this tight end named Parnum. He was an absolute beast with over a hundred yards receiving this week and two touchdowns. If he keeps going to that dude, Dallas is going to be a force. Uh, my only issue and my only issue with Dallas is their their offense can look sluggish at times it still can look discombobulated all right it, it's not firing smoothly for a team that put up 24 points for a quarterback that threw 274 yards it just didn't flow real smoothly okay so that's why they're number three and that's why they're not higher. Number two, without a doubt, the St. Louis Battlehawks. That's right. Jordan Tamu. Uh, look, Jordan didn't Jordan didn't have a huge game. But the Battlehawks, number one, look out. If you got to go into St. Louis, 28,000 fans, and they were out of control. Terrible towels waving in the in the stadium. They came out, they ran the ball. Matt Jones had 95 yards in that game and a touchdown. Kristen Michaels had 44 yards, added a touchdown. Tamu, 67% completion. Um, I don't know. He might have taken a bit of a step back in the MVP talk, okay? But he's still right there, especially with Cardell Jones having laid such an egg. I'd say it's still P.J. Walker and Jordan Tamu. Landry Jones is going to start whispering back there if he can cut the interceptions down. Battlehawks played in all three phases. Special teams, defense, offense today. Battlehawks are my number two team in the XFL going into week four. And this was easy. Not to be a homer, but my team is the Houston Roughnecks, and they are my number one team in the power rankings. Before you call me out for being a homer, D.C. was number one last week. Houston was number two. Houston went out. They played a tough, spunky Tampa Bay Vipers team that fought to the bitter end. But P.J. Walker is blowing everybody away for the XFL MVP right now. 306 yards this week. Three touchdowns. 34 yards rushing. Added another touchdown on the ground. Okay, they got Cam Phillips down there who had 194 yards receiving. This Houston offense is deadly. And at home, they've got a crowd that is fully engaged. And they played against the crowd in Tampa that was fully engaged. Give Tampa's uh, fans a lot of credit. I thought it was the D.C. Defenders and the Houston Roughnecks on a collision course. Now I'm thinking this may all come back around at some point. I don't know. We'll see. have to see how it plays out and how the divisions lay out. But as of right now, it's the Houston Roughnecks at number one. And I think there is a little bit of separation between Houston and St. Louis. But, look, the league is interesting. 
One of my concerns about the league, though, I will say, is both games on Sunday today were blowouts, which is going to hurt you from a television perspective. So I, I noticed one of the games is going to ESPN2 next week. Not ESPN, not ABC. So that's a little concerning as an XFL fan. That's going to hurt the ratings regardless. There's no way around it. You go to ESPN2, it's going to get lesser of a rating than ESPN. You go to FS1, it's going to get a lesser rating than ESPN or ESPN2, likely. Okay, that is my rankings for week going into week four. Hit the subscribe button. Join Black and White Sports. Peace, I'm out. Until next week.